Hi everyone, my name is Mitch Romzhensky and in this video we're going to talk a little bit about tree shaking and also I will try to explain why Angular services configured with provided in root property are tree shakable. And before we start, I just wanted to remind you that recently I released my uh, two hours workshop about Angular material theming. So if you uh, somehow missed this, you can check the video description. There will be a link to this workshop. And now we are getting started. So before we start to answer the question why uh, provided in property makes our services tree shakeable. Uh, let's have a look at the tree shaking mechanism at all. So I prepared the small project for it. Uh, it consists just from two files, app.js and user model.js. And this is a very simple webpack config, which creates the final bundle for our application, yeah? So we have the entry file, which is app.js, then we set the mode production in order to enable the tree shaking. And then I just use Babel loader in order to process my ES6 files. And then there will be output into app.js file, which will be located under the dist folder. And then we have also Babel RC. This is kind of configuration um, how to build our JavaScript, our ES6 JavaScript. And also we have the package.json where I have dependencies uh, on the Babel and things like that. And now let's have a look at our app.js file. This is very simple one. So we have the import of some um, functions, classes, we will see it a, a bit later. And here I create the user uh, and I just uh, do console log and call some function which comes from the user model. And inside the user model, you can see uh, three things I I'm exporting. This is the user class, which has such a properties, right? And then I have the function one, which uh, takes as argument user and returns the name. And also I have the function should I subscribe, which is definitely true. Uh, and uh, it returns yeah this uh, property from the user. Very simple. And as you may notice, I use only two properties, uh, like one function and the class name from uh, this model. So it means that I don't need this function in the end bundle, right? So let's try to run a webpack. I will run it in watch mode. And let's see how it looks our final bundle. So it should be created under the dist. So I will put it next to it. And let's press key and command key and command F in order to uh, predefy it. And you can see right now, let me open, damn it. Let me open the app.js uh, right here in order to see the code. And this is how it has been transpiled. So you can see this is our class. This is this part. Then we have the console log. This is this one and get username transformed to the function, which returns the name. Yeah, of course, the naming was minified. Uh, however, this is how it looks like. And we don't see any, oops, sorry. We don't see any subscribe. So it was tree shaken. So. This is basically that called illumination. We remove things which we are we don't need in our final bundle. It might look very simple. However, tree shaking is a quite a big topic. But anyway, I will give you some basic advices which will allow your code to be more tree shakeable. And the first and this is actually essential thing which makes uh, JavaScript code tree shakeable is using the static imports like this. 
this is basically the key to tree shaking because if you load your models using this common JS syntax, which uh, which is a require and some model, it it has dynamic nature and it is very hard for Webpack to uh, determine if this code is indeed being used or not. As example, uh, let me show you this. You can do if window as example, and then you can say require, and here you can already define the model you want to load. And until you run this code, you have no idea if you need this model or not, because if you run inside the node environment, window might not exist this object window, I mean. So this is the runtime and Webpack cannot handle it. So in order to not break your application, Webpack will just include everything from this user model. And if you scroll, you, you see this should I subscribe function, which is uh, like not being used, but it is included. So this is the first thing you have to keep in mind when you write your JavaScript code. Yeah, avoid use require, use these static imports because these static imports have some restrictions like you cannot do the similar thing with the import. You are not allowed to do this. It will not work. This is syntaxes, syntax error. So yeah, this is the first thing. The second thing you have to keep in mind is that when you uh, write your functions, try to have them without side effects. So your function should be pure. What I mean by pure function? This is a very simple example just to let you know uh, what I mean. So if your function modifies some array or doesn't matter what it is, something from outside of its scope, yeah, if we have something like this and your function then does, I don't know, like pop the latest, latest value. So this function pop modifies the array, which is out of scope this function, this is called side effects. And this function is not pure anymore. And side effects might be the problem for Webpack to properly uh, detect if this code is being used or it can be safely tree shaking. It is not possible to avoid side effects, okay? Yeah, this is fine. But if you can do it pure, like provide the array as an argument and then um, modify this within the scope of this function, this would make the function pure. So let me remove this part. The next thing I wanted to mention is about classes and its methods because methods are not tree shakeable as well. As example, if we have some method right here. Doesn't matter if we use this method or not, this will be included. As you can see, say hi exists in the end bundle. Like that's why I would recommend you either split it to smaller classes or you might use the function, small functions instead of some method. So this is up to your design. Yeah, I cannot tell you what is a uh, right choice for you. But keep in mind that this part stays. So try to split your classes function to small pieces. So it will make your code more efficient in terms of tree shaking. The next thing, probably the last one is you can use if else conditions in order to tree shaking some parts of code. This is might be useful when you have, let's create some constant here, export and say is dev. And you can use uh, this 
part here, like is dev, and you can create like condition. So if is dev, so if it's true, then we should import should I update or should I subscribe, sorry, and call it right here. So in this case, is dev true? So it means that, okay, I have to open one more time. Okay, and now you can see that subscribe was included inside the end bundle. And if we change it to false, oops, you can see that there is no user subscribe anymore. So it was also tree shaking. So if you have some log which logs only, which makes sense only with the in development mode, you can use this if else in order to tree shaking this for the production bundle. And maybe the last thing I wanted to mention that if you import something here and you are not using it, like if we would do something like this, Webpack is smart enough to understand that it's not being used. So it will also tree shaking this from the end bundle. So this is fine if you have some unused imports, it will not force Webpack to include this into the bundle. So it should be used somewhere. So this is pretty much everything what I wanted to mention about tree shaking. And now let's go to the Angular context. Here you can see just very basic Angular application. The only one additional thing I created that this is user service, which does pretty much nothing. It has only this do something method, whatever. And it has this injectable annotation where I uh, say that it should be provided inside the root um, model injector. So let's try to remove it. And let's try to provide our user service without this provided in property. So in this case, we would need to go to app model and we need to import our user service right here. So keep in mind that we don't include or inject this user service into our constructor. So we import this service, but we are not using this at all. And now let's try to build our application with this ng build mangle false environment variable. It will kind of make the production build, but it will not uglify our bundle code inside the bundle. So we will be able to see the proper names like app component inside. Okay, the bundle was created and let's open our main.js. Again, select everything and press command key, command F in order to prettify. And now let's try to find, here's our component and we have user service you can see right here but you remember that we are not using this service at all however it was included which is bad and the reason is <clears throat> in this import so despite we don't have any reference in our component we have the reference to this user service right here so you can see we import and we use it. And for Webpack, this is the reason to include user service to our end bundle. And why Webpack does it? Because the resolution of these uh, services happens at the runtime when we run our application. And Webpack cannot remove it because maybe at the runtime we will need it because we have lazy loaded models, we have dynamically created components. Maybe this lazy load model in the end will need this user service. We don't know. So that's why it stays right here. 
However, if we remove user service from our app model and we will revert this provided input, in this case, we will have zero references to our user service in our application. And it will be the reason for Webpack to remove our user service because we have no references to it. However, you might know that, okay, but this syntax, uh, when we use providers keyword, it allows us to do more like uh, flexible things. Like we can say that, provide user service and then use class and blah, 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 some another class. How we can do it with this provided in root syntax and if we can do it at all. And we can, we can do it. You just can define it right here. So you can see this use class, use existing, use factory, use value and uh, all other properties which are available for uh, old style syntax. So let's try to use use class. And here you can provide the alternative class like let's create the new one. I will say export. Okay, have better user service which also can do uh, this do something but it has some different name like hello from better user. So like this and we can we can replace it here. And here's the thing I wanted to highlight is that if you use use class with this syntax with uh, this provided in root, you must decorate your class with injectable like this. This is uh, what you should not do if you use this syntax, right? You can provide a class without decorating this class with annotation, uh, with injectable annotation, sorry. However, let me remove it. However, if you use 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 class uh, within this injectable, you must add injectable. Otherwise, you will get error that uh, factory for this service is not available and it is required. And this factory is, is being created during the compilation of these um, annotations. Angular compiles this and depends on the data uh, you provided, it uh, builds proper factory for creation of this service. And yeah, this is uh, like, like a small hint, but other um, dependency providers like use existing, they're using, they are working the same way like with that old syntax. Also, you can provide um, use value, use uh, factory, you can have some functions here which uh, return some certain instance. More about these providers you can watch on my video which is dedicated exactly about uh, dependency providers. So I will leave the link somewhere up there. And yeah, I think there is nothing else to add. All right, guys, that was it. I hope this video was interesting. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching me. And please share my videos with your colleagues, friends, if you find them useful. This is the best thing you can do for me, for my channel to grow. And also I wanted to announce that next three weeks I have vacation. So most probably I will not be so active in the comment section and uh, will not be answering for direct messages. However, you can subscribe to my Instagram. They're planning to post different um, videos, photos from my vacation. If you are interested, yeah, you can subscribe to it. Uh, anyway, yeah, see you in the future, namely in three weeks and have a productive weeks. Ciao.